Okay, on to the next step of our herringbone box. You've got your herringbone stock set up right here. We took these out of the clamps and uh, we're going to go over to the miter saw now and we're going to cut this at a 30 degree angle. Before I do that, I do want to double check my drawing one more time. And one thing I did not indicate on this drawing is the angle of the herringbone right here. So that right there, we're going to call that 30 degrees. It actually does match the keys that we're going to cut in later and those are indicated at 30 degrees. So we are going to cut this at 30 degrees. What I do need to check is that my thickness or my width of my cut is uh, 3 eighths of an inch. And this is tricky because it's at an angle. It's not 3 eighths of an inch this way, it's 3 eighths of an inch this way. So we're going to make our first cut at 30 degrees. Then I'll use a square and measure back 3 eighths of an inch for my first cut. We'll then use a stop block and we'll do repeated cuts after that. Okay, so we're going to go to the miter saw, make a first cut here, get a stop block, and then we'll cut the four cuts that we need. If you're doing this in a group, go ahead and make um, as many cuts as you need. And while I've got this set up, I'm going to go ahead and make some additional cuts just in case one gets messed up. I'll have an extra one I can work with. To the miter saw. Okay, one thing I notice right now is that I've got a little bit of wiggle here, and if I really want this to be precise, I do want that bottom edge to be clean. Um, I'm going to hit this with a scraper really quick, and we're going to make a single pass through the jointer just to clean up this bottom edge, just so I can get a good, um, a good solid landing on this miter saw here. Scraper. Get off any of that glue that's going to be in the way. And yes, you can safely face joint wood. single pass there and now that sits nice and flat on the surface okay I haven't gone all the way through I still have some um, some offset right there but this will allow us to make safe cuts okay the next step is to go to the miter saw loosen this handle and we're going to go to 30 degrees okay notice the stop here is at 31.6 degrees I'm gonna rotate this back and tighten that in place Okay, so my first cut is just to get it started here. Okay, that's what it's going to start to look like there. All right, next we're going to need a stop block. So I need to do a couple things. First, we're going to mark 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to mark that in a couple of places. And notice I'm using the heel of my square to make this mark. I'm measuring perpendicular to the line that I just cut. Three eighths of an inch. Come out here a little bit more. And then I'm just going to, for this first one, I'm going to draw this line. So then I don't have to worry about where my blade lands. All right. Next, we'll need a stop block that we can clamp to the fence so that when I push this forward, it will be the same point every single time. Okay, now remember when I cut, I've got the kerf, so I want the blade to be on the left side of my cut. Now what I might do is just tag it a little bit right there. I'm gonna move it back a little bit there and I'm gonna go get a clamp. We're gonna clamp that right on there. We'll cut our first one, make sure it's right, and then we'll make multiple cuts. Make sure that's not gonna move. And I moved that a little bit there, so. Okay. Now, when I made this cut, there's actually a little bit of an offset in there, so I'm going to move this forward after this just to clean up this edge right here. But this is my first cut right now. Now, from this point forward, every time I hit that stop block, it will be exactly the same measurement, which is what we want. So we're going to go like this.
Got to get that out now because if I hit it with a saw blade, I'll ruin it. Hey. And remember, I had that little offset last time, so I'm just going to trim this here. All right, now I'm just going to make repeated cuts. Tie it against the fence up to the stop block. You can start to see now why I need that extra length of board. Pretty soon my fingers are going to be too close to the blade and I won't have enough board on the fence to be able to maintain my angle. So there's four. I did make a couple of extra pieces. So there's four, eight, I actually have two extra pieces. I might make a couple more just to be on the safe side. Okay, while I'm over here, I'm also going to start setting up for the rest of my project. So let's go to the picture. Let's just start thinking about how this looks. So we've got that pointing up to match that. I need to make four of those. And since I do have extra pieces, I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple more just to be on the safe side. That dude does have some gappage in there. Probably what I'll do if I need to use this is I'll make that the inside of the box because we're gonna cover that with flocking. If we look on the outside here, that is, that is nice and tight right there, but there is some gaps right there. Okay, so I've got enough pieces to do what I need to do. I'm also going to need some cherry for these pieces here. And I need nine inches here, and the side will be five and a half inches. So that makes 11 plus 18, makes 28 inches. We'll get a little bit more, so let's go probably 30 inches just to be on the safe side. And that needs to be three and let's find it on our drawing right there. So the side of the box is three and three eighths. So I definitely want my cherry stock to be a little bit wider than that. All right, so we're gonna go 28 inches by at least three and a half. Let me do my math again. Nine and nine is 18. 18 plus 10 is 28. We'll make it 30 inches. All right, 30 inches by three and a half. All right, right over here I have my cherry. Oh, look at that, conveniently enough, a board right in front. It's almost as if I planned this for myself. Okay, now this is wider than three and a half, but this is the narrowest one we can find, so we'll use that. We need 30 inches of this. And here's where I get messed up. By the time I get to the miter saw, I'm gonna forget which side it is, so. I'm gonna put my name on this side. All right, so on my materials acquisition sheet, I'm gonna write down 30 by, we're gonna call that five inches. We always round up if it's close. All right, to the miter saw. All right, you saw that right there. That's because this board actually has a little bit of a warp in it. Plus we have some sawdust along the fence. It's a good example of what not to do. Okay. Keep this one, put this one back. All right, since we've got a board that's shorter, we're gonna come up here and Cherry is the second one. And we're gonna put it in the shorts container right there. We're gonna go ahead and cut this board into the lengths for gluing, but we're not gonna glue it quite yet. All right, 30 by, so that's four and a half. I need three and a half. I'm gonna cut, 
And I'm going to go ahead and leave this. There's not enough scrap left over to worry about. Okay. One thing I do want is I want to keep a continuous grain. Okay, I've got this beautiful grain in this, so I don't want to have this randomly placed. I'm actually going to plan my pieces as I go. So we're going to start from the front. This calls for two and three fourths. And I'm actually going to go this side. Five and a half. We're going to make that the corner. And then we need two and three fourths from there. I think one thing I want to do, because I do want these cuts to be nice and square, is I'm going to joint this edge just so I have something good to measure from. Because if it moves at all on that table or on that miter saw, it won't be square. Okay. I'm going to make this a little bit extra long. I know I need five and a half, so I'm going to put the first cut at six. And then two and three fourths. So we'll need at least three. One, two, three. Okay, so this will be the right. This will be the front. Front, right. Okay, and then this is where it gets tricky. Okay, because these, because they're an end, We've got a little bit of curve space to work with, but this middle piece is going to be exactly square and it has to be exactly two inches. So from this, I'm going to go here from the nine to the 11, and this will be the front center. And I want the curve to be outside of both of those. Okay. And then I need the same thing from the front left and the right. So we did nine inches there. We'll do another nine inches. So that'll take us to 20. And this will be the front left. And this will be the left side. Okay, and then we're getting to the back side. We need another, let's see here, two and three fourths. So we're gonna make it three inches. This will be the back left and then we get to the back center which is exactly two inches and we've got lots of extra over here okay and again this curve goes exactly here and exactly here so essentially what's going to happen is there's going to be a herringbone pattern and there's going to be a herringbone pattern when we take this and wrap it all around Okay, and this one I do want to use a square on. And remember I jointed this edge here. So I need to use my square on the jointed edge. And the only place I need to cut right now is just where those herring bones are going to go. The rest of us will leave in place. We're just going to glue this all back together, end grain to end grain. Okay, so back to the miter saw. Here, 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 and here, and I'll show you what this looks like. I'm going to switch to a left hand so I've got extra to hold on to here. Hmm. I don't like that at all. Look at that. Something's wrong with this saw.
Okay, oh, and we did not mark this. This is the back right. So we're going to take these all in order. I'll do that so I can keep track of them. Okay, this is back left, so this will be back right. Okay, so how this goes together, when all's said and done, is like so. So once this is all glued up, we'll be able to cut the front panel out of this, the right side panel, and you can see now where that continuous grain is. Okay, we want to maintain that as much as we can. Okay, but what I don't want to do is try to do this all in one big thing. It's a lot of sliding around. So today we're just going to glue the herring bones together, make sure that those line up perfectly, and then we'll let that sit overnight, and then we'll clamp this whole assembly again together tomorrow. All right, so I need my Type 1 glue and some clamps, and I'm just going to use my Irwin Quick Grips. Uh, we'll use whatever we have available to us. Okay. We do want to make sure that this gets completely covered in glue since there's very little surface area. I like that. We'll to mash them together, pull them apart, look for any dry spots right there in the corner. Okay, so there's one pair. Oops. Okay, I'm going to set that one aside, use that in a different place. That's why we do backup. All right, check for coverage. That one's a little bit dry. Okay, so these two, we're not going to glue together. I'm just going to put them together just so I can clamp them. But I do want to make sure that my herring bones all line up. When you guys do this together, you're going to be using a lot of clamps because each one of you is going to be making four of these. Okay, I'm pushing down on the table just to level them out as much as I can. Put a good squeeze there, and a good squeeze there. And we'll let those sit overnight. Okay, so we're going to let those sit until tomorrow. I've got these marked up, so we can just set those aside like this. That one's got glue on them, so I'm just going to throw him away. I still have four extra pieces. All right, so tomorrow we'll glue this whole assembly together for now. Set everything aside. And we wait for glue to dry. Just watching glue dry. Watching the glue dry. <laughs>